with autism. You know, what's the initial approach to evaluating these kids? Like, how do you start to think about what's going on? You do a deep history, right? Yeah. What, what are you looking for in the history? So in the history, I'm looking for, you know, any familial history um, of, of autism, just to make that, you know, any uh, neurodevelopment disorders. Um, then I'm looking specifically at uh, mom. Um, what was her nutrition like when she went into pregnancy? Uh, what was her, you know, what was her stress levels going into pregnancy? Getting a really good understanding of uh how she how she was in pregnancy because that has a big impact on yeah. on the child. Does she have fillings? You know, Did she you know get vaccines yeah. with mercury in them? Like exactly. The Did she get antibiotics you know prenatally um, or antenatally, uh, which can impact the child's microbiome? Because a lot of these kids, you know, just as a quick aside, they come out of the womb with gut issues. Mm -hmm. They have diarrhea from day one. Then I want to know about. What were the child's early days like? Did they have feeding issues? Were they hypo? Did they have hypotonia, meaning that they were they didn't have the muscle tone that a baby should have? Um, did they meet developmental milestones? Did they have colic? Right. And did, did they have ear infections and antibiotics? Antibiotics. Did they have C-section right. births. Did they get Did they get uh, immunizations? You know, early in life. You know, hepatitis B vaccine can have some yeast proteins in it, and that can maybe possibly sensitize a child to yeast uh, and create some inflammatory processes early on yeah I, I want to be clear about vaccines i, I don't yeah, yeah. think vaccines cause no, autism no I, it wasn't I, making I, a... I do think that there's there's a whole field of vaxonomics yeah uh, mayo clinic and others have departments of vaxonomics which looks at the the variability in responses and, and we know that you know certain certain uh kids uh, who are sick when often they get vaccines can have adverse immune responses yes. and we know that autism is an inflammatory disorder right. so there is some something going on yeah but but it is not that vaccines cause autism. No, there, there are many things that can trigger an, uh, an immune response. Right. So I, I just think I want to be clear about yeah. that. I think I think that we do we do have to look at these these bigger issues of what is driving the inflammation. And so so you take that history and then we want to dive into the the testing. Right. One of the first tests that we do is we, we look at the gut microbiome. And, you know, so the, we're going to do a complete diagnostic stool evaluation and we're going to be looking for the things that you've mentioned. Uh, Candida, which is a mold, is one of the major or things yeast, that we, yeah. yeast, we, we typically will find in the gut. But we're also looking for you know, uh, an imbalance of good and bad bacteria that can be caused by the nutrition that they yeah. had, the nutrition that their mom had, any antibiotic use. Uh, we're going to be looking for parasites. Yeah. You know, kids can develop these parasites that can, you know, can be autoimmune triggers and that will need to be eradicated. So the gut is the first place. Um, and then we look at the immune markers. I've seen kids yeah. who have really high markers of inflammation or really low like like you would see yeah. in someone with colitis yeah but you know yeah we'll and see, these kids yeah. have sticky smelly mucusy weird stools right. that are pasty and weird yeah and we see these awful really, yeah and and yeah. and that's, that's telling you that there's something's rotten down there and, and you have to deal with it yeah 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 and, and that causes leaky gut right and leaky gut and so yeah we, we we're you know we leaky gut is just basically a part of almost every conversation when we're talking about you know people in the functional medicine world are coming over any any um immune disorder or, or immune dysfunction um so we're well, that's the first place i look because that's one of the most commonly one of the most concerning areas for parents is you know they're just they have stinky smelly poops that i'm changing the diaper every day all day Day, you yeah. know and and can can we do something about that i know that that has to be part of the problem yeah and they're right it is and 60 so, percent of the immune system is right. in the gut and the gut and the brain are connected and, and right the, and if you have a lot of toxic bugs in there those toxic bugs produce metabolites that are right. toxic to the brain right and can interfere with brain function yeah and so we're you know so the the next you know the next place that i'll look will be at mighty you know at the nutrient you know looking at nutritional evaluation finding out specifically are they getting all the nutrients they need for the mitochondria to function as well as they should yeah because mitochondrial dysfunction has a huge role to play in how our brains are going to function um and so we we look there it's an energy deficit these kids yeah. can't make enough energy in their brains to work and and you can do testing like organic acids would you look at the mitochondrial function and you can look at the way you process energy and this is not a test you normally see at your regular no, you doctor's don't. office and then we do heavy metal testing you know again because you know the, a lot of these children may have difficulties with their toxification genes yes. they may not be able to detox as well that's right so so the normal toxins that we're all exposed to 
they can't process. That's right. So looking at their, you know, looking at their um, their physiology of detoxification, and also at their their uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms as variations in genes that impact how well a enzyme is going to function. We look at those because if we can identify some of those genes that aren't working well, that clues us in to what specific nutritional plan yeah. and targeted nutrients that they need. Yeah, and these kids often have genetic variations in the, also the B vitamin genes yep. that affect B12 and folate and B6, and they might need really high doses of certain nutrients. They might need special forms of these nutrients. And so these are things you, you really can understand by looking at their unique genetics. Absolutely. Um, the other thing, obviously, we look at is food sensitivities. Mm -hmm. Uh, and food reactions, and there's a couple in 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 in, in um, autism that are so gluten prominent. and dairy. So right gluten off the dairy. bat, right off the bat, it's gluten and dairy. And the reason why we focus so much on gluten and dairy because they can, when they are broken down, you know, certain people will break them down into peptides uh, called caseomorphins and gluteomorphins. And peptides are just small proteins. Uh, they're usually 50 amino acids or shorter. And that these, these can actually cross the blood-brain barrier, and they can have a deleterious effect on how the brain will function. They can actually impair cognition. They can impair um, neuro, neurotransmitter um, communication. Uh, so these, these are like little molecules of like heroin running around your yep. brain, and they make you spaced out and one yep. of these kids yep. are they slow cognition can't focus yeah. can't connect they have can't an opiate like connect. effect my have mothers say to me i can't take him off gluten because oh what well, it makes everything worse yeah and you will. just have to really <laughs> batten down the hatches <laughs> lock the cabinets lock we'll the fridge through. We'll yeah. get through. it's it's true it's really true and, and and the gluten also causes a leaky gut too oh yeah so you get so on you top just... of the you get more inflammation more reactions and the dairy has an interesting uh, uh, effect as well uh, in, in a subset of these autistic kids, there is uh, these folate receptor blocking antibodies right. that are caused by dairy. So when you eat dairy, mm -hmm. your body creates an antibody against the dairy, but it binds to the folate receptor. Okay. Now, right. folate is one of the most important nutrients to create neurotransmitters and make your brain work. And when you can't get folate working, your entire cycle of what we call methylation, methylation which is, is this disrupted. B vitamin cycle is blocked, and your entire cycle of detoxification is blocked because they're like cogwheels that wheel together they will work right and they together. and they don't yeah. and they don't work. And that's why these kids can't detoxify, right. they can't make neurotransmitters, they can't function. And it has a huge and it has a huge impact on uh, on energy production in mitochondria as well. Yeah, and getting these people off dairy and then boosting up this special form of folate called right. methylfolate, these kids can really right. pop up and, and come alert. And so you know, there's not like one treatment for right. autism, right? No. This kid might do well with no dairy and a high dose of methylfolate. Another kid might need to fix their gut. Another kid might, it might be a gluten issue. Another kid might be a mitochondrial problem. Right. And so you have to sort of dig into this. And this is the beauty of functional medicine is right. we don't treat all patients the same. We look at them as individuals. We look at, at real personalized medicine, personalized nutrition. And we do very sophisticated diagnostics which allow us to really map out what's going on with these kids. So you're like, you go, wait a minute, if there's actually lab tests that help us identify and map out what's disordered in these kids' biology, like why aren't pediatric neurologists doing this? Why aren't pediatric psychiatrists doing this? It's like, it makes me crazy. I am sorry, it makes me crazy. No. Because after treating literally hundreds of these kids with everything from dyslexia to ADD to autism to behavioral issues, it's all the same stuff at different, you know, different things are going on in different kids, but it's all the same approach. It creates a really deep dive to help these kids. Right. So it is a deep dive and it's, and it's a comprehensive approach. And so once we've looked at the gut, once we looked at, you know, basic nutrition, once we've looked at some of the more intricacies, uh, intricate nutrition uh, and, and deficiencies that might impact um, the mitochondria, uh, we look at toxins, uh, we look at genes, we look specifically at uh, genes of detoxification, inflammation, and there's very important methylation genes that are responsible for so much, including detoxification and energy production in the, in the yeah. um, mitochondria. Um, once we've looked at all of that, um, then we start, you know, and then we look at immune markers. We, we do look at uh, markers for immune function um, that will, you know, help us understand 
um, if a, pa- a patient's immune system is, in, is hypervigilant or whether it's it's so tired it's depressed. So as we said before, uh, we t- we do the stool testing, and and one of, and one of those markers in the gut that we look to, to uh, get a sense of what the immune system is doing is secretory IgA or SIgA. And, uh, and it's not uncommon for... That's an antibody, it's an antibody that is made as a first line of defense in our guts right. against infection, right? And yeah, but sometimes by the time I see these kids, their immune systems have been working so hard for so long that they're not, they're not able to produce this antibody. And that is an indicator that they have a significant amount of immune dysfunction, and that becomes a focal point for how we're going to treat them. That's right. And, and I think, you know, we also look at... at nutrient levels because there's mm-hmm. a lot of nutrient levels that are really low in these kids omega-3 fats and zinc and magnesium vitamin a and vitamin, vitamin a d. and vitamin d and omega-3 fats and and b12 and, oh, and b vitamins and b6 yeah. and, and so so with, with often some really simple interventions you can make profound profound differences in these kids um we also treat the gut ex- aggressively with very. these kids with lots of probiotics and things that really <clears> help the gut and enzymes. So it, it's a lot of work, uh, and yeah. it's a lot of work for the parents. Uh, it's, it's, it's often costly. Unfortunately, insurance doesn't cover this yet, although hopefully it will. Uh, I mean, because you think of the cost up front of doing you know a few thousand dollars worth of diagnostics versus an entire lifetime of of, of, of support services and, it's no- and institutionalized care. I mean, it's, it's really a bargain. It's a no-brainer. It's a bargain and no-brainer, but it, it is a real cost, and often families can't afford it, which just breaks my heart. Yeah. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff you can do on your own, and I think I think a lot of these things we're talking about are lifestyle and nutrition. And I, and I, I think, you know, I want to share, maybe share a case or so, and I'll, I'll share some of my sure. cases. Sure. Um- I have, you know, so there's a, there's a, a boy that came to me, he's uh, like, four and a half his name was johnny mom and dad brought him in to see me um he was actually a delightful little boy uh, but he had all the hallmarks of you know autism um and he had little very little progress working with his pediatrician Mm -hmm. and the mom had somehow come across functional medicine saw a video and they had not done too much uh to this point and so uh, it was really exciting. Uh, I remember reviewing the chart thinking, I am so excited to be working with them because just by reading the chart, there seems to be a lot that we can do. So the main things that they brought him in with um, was that he had um, a lot of gut issues, a lot of bloating, a lot of distension, a lot of diarrhea. Uh, mm-hmm. He also had eczema. Uh, and he had all the behavioral characteristics of um, autism, and he had uh, difficulty with sleep. Those mm. were the, the main characteristics. Uh, he was not socializing well at, at four and a half. Um, his re- he, he was not at reading level. A lot of difficulty with language, social cueing. Um, did not he was he was with, uh, socially isolated, withdrawing from yeah. kids oftentimes. And when he was around kids, oftentimes he he would misread cues, lose his yeah. temper, yeah. hit hit and bite. And so it was very difficult for the family to yeah. really engage socially with other families and go places. Uh, so, of course, you know, sitting with them the, the first time, there's just a lot of tears, and mm-hmm. just and there's a lot of listening. Uh, and so, I was so happy at the end of the visit when Mom just said thank you. She just mm-hmm. said thank you for mm-hmm. listening, because I really, for the first time, think we're going to get help. Now he's he's like four and a half years old, and they they've been going to their docs for a long time. So that was a really really good start to give them hope. So after that first visit, the things that we really have done is we've, we've given them, they're going to get that, that, all that testing done. But knowing that he had gut issues, one of the first things I did was said, we're going to put him on a gluten-free, dairy-free diet. We're going to take out some of the other potential you know, uh, inflammatory products like eggs and soy um, and, ye- you know, and yeast. Uh, and we want no sugars, no processed carbs. That is a lot. Just starting there with an autistic child is giving a family like a huge task. And so I don't want to do too much. Uh, particularly these children have a lot of sensory um, uh, issues. So they will have texture issues. They may have swallowing issues. So giving them a, a, a huge number of supplements uh, is not something that we can do. But at the first visit, they get a nutritional plan, as I've outlined there. And generally, depending on what's going on, I'll start a probiotic. And I usually will start with like a, you know, a, a high-potency probiotic. 
and potentially uh, a digestive enzyme to really start to help get that gut functioning um, in, in a way that um, will uh, be helpful. So nutrition and gut issues, and I also put them on a multiple vitamin because generally these kids have very limited diets, so their nutrients and their vitamin uh, intake is going to be limited. So we put them on a, a robust uh, multiple vitamin uh, and some additional mitochondrial support. And that's how we start. Well, how did he do? So in eight weeks, he came back and they had a hard time with the nutrition plan. But they were able to take out, you know, most of his gluten and dairy. And they noticed immediately that a lot of his bloating started to go away after meals. And his diarrhea started to decrease. They were very happy. And his eczema began to clear up. Yeah. So, you know, just there, they were, they were, they were thrilled. So then when we went over all of his testing, he did have genes that indicated that he had uh, a folate receptor antibody that was positive, so he's making folate receptor antibodies, and he had genes that made it difficult for him to use folate um, in, in the first place. Mm -hmm. So we added we added methylfolate to his to his plan, uh, and uh, we also added um, he was also very low in vitamin D, so we added in vitamin D and vitamin A, mm. and. Three months later, um, it wasn't even three months, was it three months? Yeah, three months later, mom indicated that his eczema was gone. Uh, they, they were able to really expand. He was almost totally dairy-free and gluten-free. Um, he was taking the vitamin D, the vitamin A. Uh, he was taking the additional um, uh, methylated folate, and his eczema was gone. His bloating had stopped. With the high-dose probiotics, they noticed that his, his, his diarrhea had had almost completely resolved. He was having more formed movements, Amazing. but multiple in the day. And his speech therapist indicated that he had made strides in his language uh, um, acquisition. Yeah. Pretty amazing. And I just it reminds me. And that was that was like at six months mark. Yeah, and, and we weren't and, even and, done. And you keep working through the layers. It's like layers. You start with the simple yeah. stuff and the diet and the nutritional support. But there's some of his layers. And I you know, I, I it reminds me of a kid I saw when he was twenty twenty uh, maybe he was uh, you know, two and a half years old, right? And he was diagnosed at twenty two months with autism, it was regressive autism, and he was fine and then he, he got sick and and, and and his mother was told, you know, nothing we can do, just use the behavioral therapy. And his mother was not willing to take that at, at face value and came to see me. And I'm like, look, this is her early on. And I, and I, I said, look, look, I, I, I can't promise you that I can do anything to help your son. But we do know that this is a systemic disorder. We do know that it's inflammation of the brain. We do know there's issues around gut and toxins. We know there's issues around mitochondria. Let's, let's and nutritional factors. Let's just take a look. And we looked under the hood and we saw an array of problems that were right. so easy to treat really i mean they they i mean he had he had the worst gut issues stinky smelly sticky poops he had severe um we call it dysbiosis which is imbalances in the bacteria in his gut he had 28 food sensitivities gluten and dairy were, antibodies were really high so he had severe leaky gut and he also had lots of nutritional deficiencies, right? He had magnesium, zinc, manganese, vitamin A, vitamin B12, vitamin D, omega-3 fats. All yeah. were very low. Right. We, just, we just tested them. And these are all essential for brain function, for immune function, for so many things. And he was loaded with toxins. We did uh. Uh, uh, levels of, of, of toxins in his blood, with, which had a high aluminum and, and lead. His hair had antimony and arsenic, and he had low levels of the most important uh, detoxifying compound in his body, uh, glutathione. And he also had other things we talked about, the mitochondrial yeah. issues he had on everything. the testing, and he had <laughs> methylation problems. He's, so these kids often yeah. don't have one thing. Yeah. It's just like Every, it's a yeah. biochemical train wreck. Right. Right? And, and using functional medicine, you begin to tease it apart, and you order the therapies to start with the simplest stuff. You change the diet, you fix the gut, you get the nutrient levels up, you start to deal with mitochondrial function, you start to, then to deal with the toxic load, you boost up the methylation, and and we did all of those things. We helped, it's, you know. We need, you know, we, we found just, for yeah. example, B twelve shots, which kind of uh, up, overrode some of these biochemical pathways, allowed him to start detoxifying. He was starting to have eye contact, started connecting, started not being in his world. I mean, when I when I first met him, he was just in the room, like staring into space, looked like he was on a heroin trip, yeah. on a psychedelic adventure. 
uh, completely in his own world, wordless, no speech. And, and, um, and over time, we work through all these issues, like peeling the onion, and, and, and this doesn't happen with every kid, yeah. but we, we're really diligent. And, you know, it took a lot of work. The parents were really it's very, diligent yeah. about yeah. doing the things that they need to do. We took yeah. away the gluten and the food allergens. We got rid of the, the, the dysbiosis and the bad bugs and the fungus in his gut. We, we actually helped replenish his gut with probiotics and enzymes. We gave him all the minerals and nutrients he needed and the omega-3 fats. We got his mitochondria working. We started detoxifying him. And, and over a number of years... Um, he went from being completely locked in to a normal mm -hmm. kid. Yeah. Now I'm not saying using this approach we can take care uh, and cure all cases of autism, yeah. but this was this was a miracle case. But but honestly, over many decades of doing this, we can help. Whether it's a 50 percent improvement, a 25 percent improvement, a 75 percent improvement, complete resolution, we see all of it. Yeah, and I would say I, I have I have not seen a, a child with autism that I was not able to help in some way. If people are listening, you know, and this this is we're in a, we're in a we're in a crisis of our children's brains. I mean, one in six children today have some type of neurodevelopmental disorder. One in six—that's a lot of kids. And it's dyslexia, yeah. it's ADD, it's learning difficulties, it's uh, autism spectrum issues. I mean, it's a lot of kids. Yeah. And and we just are so in the dark ages in traditional medicine about this, and we have really advance this field in functional medicine and, and see miracles all the time. And it's just heartbreaking for me that parents don't have access to this. They don't know how to uh, find their way to practitioners who can help. And, and that's really why we're here at the Ultra Wellness Center, why yeah. I established this 15 years ago and what, why, why it's so satisfying practicing this medicine because we do see real change. We do. You know, it, it, we're in this moment where everything's changing. You know, where we're, you know we're, we're seeing... We're seeing, you know, the the opening up of the mind around autism to understand that it really is a biological disorder. If we it's not can't, a mental disorder. If we can't look at these numbers, if we can't look at going from, you know, 1970, it was estimated one in 10,000 kids would have autism to one in 54. If we can't look from 1970 to 2020 and, and we can't say there is something significantly wrong with our environment today just yeah. based on looking at this number and the brain is the canary in the coal mine because you know we're talking about autism but the adult brain is under siege too yeah. because we know that alzheimer's is not epidemic level and and so just i'm just saying this these numbers and looking at autism is is a is a really it's a it's a wake-up call for all of us to understand we, we really need to pay attention to the toxicity of our environment and our food yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I think what you're saying is so important. Uh, these kids are the canary in the coal mine. They're, they're a warning sign for all of us to pay yeah. attention that, that our food supply, our environment, and our, our, our way of life has is, is got to change. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I'm just so grateful, George, for you being here at the Ultra Wellness Center. If you've been listening to this podcast uh, and you know someone with autism or on the spectrum, uh, are you struggling in your family with this or you have friends, please share this podcast with them because... Uh, it'll help them understand that there is a way. And we're here at the Ultra Wellness Center. We've got a great team of practitioners who've been doing this for a very long time. And, and, and we just love seeing these kids. So uh, please share this podcast with them and, and know that there is hope. Uh, and of course, uh, leave a comment. How have you helped your kids with using these approaches? Uh, what, what has worked? What hasn't worked? And, and of course, subscribe wherever you get your podcast so you can listen to The Doctor's Pharmacy. And we'll see you next week on The Doctor's